if you would, this morning and open to 1 Kings. 1 Kings, that's in the Old Testament there. If you would, it's before Chronicles. 1 Kings chapter 17. A beautiful story here about a wonderful story about a woman who's not saved at the moment. Doesn't know the Lord, hasn't received uh, Jehovah God in the Old Testament here. And uh, she's in a dire situation, it's just happening, and she's going to have to learn to, to trust God. Ladies, you're going to have to learn to trust God no matter what the circumstances are. No matter what the situations are that you're facing, the trials that you're going through. There's going to come in your life, you're going to have to face them, and you're going to have to learn to trust God no matter what. We find a beautiful story here about a widow woman, by the way. So she's in dire straits there because when you're in the Old Testament back in these days, if you were a widow, you were in tough shape. They basically didn't care much for you and didn't take care of you. And she's got a son. Her husband has passed away and she's in destitute and she finds herself living in a pagan land with a bunch of pagans and he heathens and, uh, I mean, you name it, idolatrous, Baal worshipers there in Zephra, which means, Zephra, the name means melting pot. I mean, she's there in a melting pot with every kind of thug and corruption you can imagine living in this state as a widow uh, with her son there. Matter of fact, she's, uh, this is Israel is absolutely actually under judgment right now by God because of their disobedience to God. See, folks, any time we get out of disobedience to God, we get under God's judgment. When there's obedience to God, we get God's blessing. And God's dealt with Israel all along with all of that all the time. And this happens to be one of those times that God is using a wicked king and queen uh, to bring judgment upon Israel. This is the northern tribes now, the ten. And uh, the wicked king and queen happen to be Ahab and Jezebel. Now, I don't know too many parents that named their sons Ahab and daughters Jezebel. I mean, think about that for a minute. They, they were wicked. Uh, they were uh, Baal worshipers idolaters, I mean, you name it, and uh, this is what God raises up sometimes when he's going to bring judgment, and the judgment that's going on is in the time of the life of the prophet Elijah, and there's a drought. Y'all familiar with the drought? Matter of fact, it was a three and a half year drought, and it was, un and God brought on the drought, so just think about it. here's a, a, a widow woman, lost her husband, has her son, uh, left and they're living in this place in Zephra here in the melting pot under Abraham uh, under uh, Ahab and Jezebel oh my goodness can you imagine that and everything is just about gone and she's in destitute she has no income she has no one to care for her and uh, boy we're uh, dying straits and you know part of the story she's going to take a little cruise of oil and a little meal and make her a little cake about the size of a cupcake and her and her son are going to eat it and die. Now that's the story we find ourselves in. And we're going to see how this woman is going to learn and how she's going to turn to trust God in spite of her circumstances. And so we're going to take a look at that this morning and we can all learn from it, by the way. Matter of fact, Abraham Lincoln once said that no man is poor who has a godly mother. And today we're honoring our mothers and their sacrifices that they have given for us and their love they have given to us to every one of us this morning. So thank God for you again, mothers. But let's read here. It's a little long passage, but try to read it here quickly, beginning in 1 Kings chapter 17. And the word of the Lord came unto, say, unto him, that is to Elijah, the prophet, saying, Arise, get thee to Zephyrah. Now the writer of that ought to tell you something right there. You know where, you know where Elijah's been? He's been down at the Brook Cherif. Are you familiar with the Brook Cherif? Because of the drought, and there where the ravens came and fed him. You know, if you get hungry, God will bring you meat some way or another. Amen? So here he is. Now, this is strange, though. You find the prophet of God, uh, this is not a place where the prophet of God would want to hang out. It's Zephra. What in the world am I going to be doing going down to Zephra under Ahab and Queen Jezebel down there into this place of this melting pot? Well, let's find out. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zephra, which belongeth to Zidon. Now, the Zidonians here. Oh, they were, they, were, they were heathen people. And dwell there. What? You want me to hang out there? 
Uh, behold, uh, here's the reason why, I have commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. Well, how in the world is she going to sustain me when she doesn't have nothing? So he arose and he went to Zephyrah, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. Now you got to understand, here's a stranger comes into town, never met, doesn't know who they are. She's in dire straits, CJ. She's getting some wood and some water to, to, to die with her son. And here comes this guy. Now, we don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us. But perhaps she recognized him as a prophet of God because of perhaps the robe that he may have been wearing, if he was, that would signify him as a prophet of God in Israel. But we don't know, okay? That I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, uh, don't you love the obedience of this stranger, this woman? Here comes a strange guy comes up to her and says, hey, I need something to drink. Would you get me something to drink? Uh, yeah, okay, you're right. Go get it yourself. You know, no, I pray thee also bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, as the Lord thy God. Now, no, don't, don't, don't miss that language right there. Did you catch it? As the Lord thy God. She didn't say as the Lord my God or the Lord our God. She said the Lord thy God. In other words, referring to Elijah's God. Are you with me? Say amen. amen. Okay. And she says, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go uh, and, and dress it for me and my son that we may eat and die. She's in a drying straight, isn't she? And Elijah said unto her, fear not, go, do, do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake. Are you all with me? First. We'll get to that in just a minute. And bring it unto me. And after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel. The barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fail. Until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and her, and her house did eat many days. Verse 16. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was so sore that he, there was no breath left in him. In other words, he died. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into the loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with this whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child, don't miss this one either, soul come back into him. Hello. See, when you die, your soul goes. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the son and the soul of the child came into him again and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth truth. See, church, God's word is always truth. You know, as our lives while we're walking with God, we're going to have trials especially moms, mothers, because you know why? They're the burden bearers of the family. They bear the burden and the blunt of most of what goes on in the trials. And so they're, they're going to face these things. And, and that's when you ladies are going to have to learn to trust God. You don't understand it all the time, do we? Most of the time we don't understand why we're having trials and going through them and what, what's going on. Isn't that right? And we sometimes question the Lord and nothing wrong with that. Sometimes we question God, why? I don't understand what's happening. But God always has a plan and a purpose and a reason for whatever he brings into your life. But you've got to learn to trust him in it. 
We know that Romans 8, 28 says what, church? That all things, how many things? All things work, to work together for good to them who are, are, are called to love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. In other words, God is working with you in your trial for your good. Your partner's in this together. And you've got to also understand that God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are much higher than our thoughts. So when you think you've got it all planned and all worked out, lay it aside because that's not God's plan or thoughts because His ways and thoughts are higher than ours. Hello? And so that's kind of what we see kind of going on here. And so, you know, God has, has an intention. God's got an intention for her, but it's not to harm her or put a greater burden on her. What's going on? It's to bless her. And God wants to bless your life today and bless my life. And yeah, God, things are going to happen and we're going to have to learn to trust God. And God is never in this to hurt you. God is never in it to bring anything wrong or evil against you. He has nothing but good intentions to bring good to you. His thoughts are always good for you and what he has planned for your life. But you've got to learn to trust him. Even when you're lost. Hello, she's not saved yet. But you may have caught it in the passage we read there, and we'll tell you when we get there, okay? Amen. So let's take a look at this first of all. I want you to see the hurt of the woman. Let's take a look at the hurt of this precious woman here, all right? And by the way, I mean, there are many trials uh, and many women throughout the Bible, women of faith that God used as examples. And this trial right now happens to be a drought trial, CJ. Matter of fact, a three and a half year one. And, of course, that was based on the prophet Elijah when he said there will not rain come for three and a half years. And God honored that, and this is where they're at right now. So here you are. You're a widow woman living in Zarephath, the melting pot of the world right now. And, I mean, under, Je under Ahab and Jezebel, your husband's died. You have no job. You have no income. You have nothing. You got your son. You're going to get two sticks, make a fire, make a cupcake, and eat it and die. Whoa. Anybody like that here today? Anybody going through that kind of trial? I don't know. There may be around the world. But I got good news for you, even if it's around the world. You trust God in this thing, all right? You be obedient as she was obedient and get the blessing God has for you. See, sometimes we give up too quickly, church, and we fold in the tile when the blessing is just around the corner. And you lose out on that blessing. You hang in there. I don't think any of us in here, and you may have, may not have as rough as this. I don't know. When I lost my mother as a child, I thought that was pretty rough. Then both grandmothers, I thought that was rough. Then both aunts, I thought that was rough. Then my father, I said, much more. how much more are we going through? You know, most of the time in my life, I felt like a, a, a child, a, a fatherless, motherless, grandparentless, familyless person. You know, almost a, who knows? Anyway, first of all, notice with me the place of, the, of her residence with me. First of all, the herd of this woman, we've got to lay a little background here. The place of residence was in Zephra. That means a melting place. It was a melting pot. It was the land of the Zionians and, and, and Zidon, the Zionians. And what, man, those guys were, they, they were Baal worshipers. They were idol worshipers. See, this was a melting pot. It's a seaport there, and so that's where most of them are like that. And so you can find out where she's at. Then let's take a look at the plight of her family. I mean, this dear woman's got a plight. First of all, we notice she was a widow. She was a widow. She had suffered great loss. Lost her provider, her provision, her husband, money, everything. And back in those days, especially living here under Ahab and Queen Jezebel, in this situation, you, you, you're going to get nothing. You, 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 matter of fact, go ahead. You might as well eat and die because that's what's going to happen to you. And so, this, so she's got a, a plight on her hands, man. And she was destitute. Verse 12 tells us she has no provisions. But I want to tell you something. Did you notice the, 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 this woman's heart? Did you notice this woman's heart in this in verse 12? Let's look at verse 12. Where is it? Everybody in verse 12 with me? And she said, as the Lord uh, thy God, in other words, referring to Elisha's God, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little coil in the cruise, and behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Did you notice about this dear lady in the sight of the plight, the sight of where she was living, the sight that she was destitute? This woman was going to care for her son right to the very end. She was going to love and care for her family, the only thing she had left, right to the very end. 
You know, that tells me something. That tells me a lot. Mothers, parents, women especially with our children. We need to care for them, to love them, and be there for them right all the way to the very end. Yet in 1973, till present time, Wade versus Road, America has killed 64 million babies. And the Bible told Jeremiah, and God said to Jeremiah, I knew you when you were in your mother's belly. When Jesus came upon the scene, he said, that which is in you is a child. God recognized even in the mother's womb, in the belly, it was a child. Yet we have killed 64 million until recently the Supreme Court overturned that. Praise God. But there's a lot of screaming and hollering going on all about it, my friend, still to this very day. No, this woman was going to care for her son all the way to the end because she loved him with all her heart. Oh, I'll tell you, this is fantastic. Well, then we come to verse 10. And see, we're going to back up back and forth a little bit. So first of all, we see the hurt of the woman. The place, not a good place. The plight, destitute. She's a widow. She's destitute. But all of a sudden, here comes along the prophet of God. Aren't you glad when God sends somebody? God sends a prophet by. The prophet of God. Now notice with me in verse 11. The prophet makes a request. And verse 11, and she soon was going to fetch it. She called to her and said, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. First of all, in verse 10, here was this request. Here's a strange guy, walks up to the strange woman he's never met. She's ready to die. And, and he says, oh, by the way, would you fetch me a little water? I'm thirsty. Now, CJ, she had a choice, didn't she? She could have said, no, get it yourself. But no, she obeyed the, the, the man of God, even though she didn't know who it was at first. And she went to get him water, even though he was a stranger. That was a custom thing to do. Well, then while she's on her way, he says, oh, by the way, and I, Elijah knew this from, from the Spirit of God. He knew what was going on. He says, oh, by the way, uh, make me a little cake, too. I'm hungry. Then she turns to him and says, now listen, sir, I don't know if you're aware of the situation. But I'm a widow. I'm living in Zephyr, the melting pot of the world right now. My son and I have nothing. I don't have a husband. And we're going to eat this little cupcake and die because it's all I got. But nevertheless, uh, but he said, notice what he said. Make me a cake first. In other words, put God first in your life. Regardless of the situation or the circumstance. See, are you going to trust God or not? See, there's going to come a time when you're going to have to put God first. So he said, oh, he said, so that. So he requests from a stranger. He requests for her. He, he asked her for her last piece of food. Man, this is all I got, brother. I'm going to eat this with my boy. We're talking about a cupcake. And we're going to die. And now you have the nerve to ask me for all that I've got? Yeah, because if you will, I got some good news for you. <laughs> you know what yet to come, man. Something big's about to happen here. And so that's the request from the prophet of God. He makes it. Now notice her response in verse 12. And she said, as the Lord thy God. Notice she called Elijah his God, not her God, his God. And she goes on and says, well, that was her response to him. So how many of you think she's in a pretty destitute place? And she's in trouble, isn't she? I mean, what else could happen? Seriously. I'm going to eat a share of a cupcake, and if I know her, she's probably going to give two-thirds of it to him as a mother. And if nothing else, she might turn around and give him the whole thing because we're going to die anyway. But she's going to care for her son right to the very end. And so... So that's the hurt of the woman. Well, let's take a look at the help of the woman. You see, church, no matter what you're in and going through, help's on the way. Help's on the way. God may send somebody by, someone into your life. You might get a phone call, a knock on the door. But God will send somebody if you just trust him. Now, notice she had to do first. She had to obey the man of God. 
She had to go get the water and make a bread for him. I can't believe this guy's asking me this. But nevertheless, I'm going to do it. Woo! Because help's on the way. She's going to, uh, I'm telling you what, man, she, she, she was going to try and help the servant of God by getting him some water and something to eat. Because he had traveled up from uh, the brook of Cherif. All right? And so she's going to take care of him. So first of all, I want you to know, look at with me in verse 9. Her heart was prepared. God had prepared her heart. And her heart was prepared by the Lord. Look at verse 9 again with me. And get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Here it is. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Do you see that? God was preparing her heart to take care of Elijah. This is not even a saved woman. Hello. God was preparing her heart. Father, folks, God's going to prepare your heart. Her heart was being prepared by the Lord. He said, I have commanded her. I have prepared her heart. Is God preparing your heart this morning? What is it that God is trying to do to speak to your heart for something he wants you to do for him? Are you going to trust him? Are you going to believe him? And he may be asking for all you got. Well, it's going to get heavy now. I know a person, another person that gave all she had. You remember, she gave her might. And Jesus said she's given of everything she had. God may ask you and I to do something for him. He's been, and let me tell you, God will never ask you and I to do something for him that he doesn't first prepare your heart and then equip you to do the job. God's not going to send you out the door and tell you to do something for him and then not give you what you need to do it, give you the strength you need to do it, the power you need to do it, the wisdom you need to do it. You can count on it. God is going before you. So she wanted to help the man of God out a little bit. God had prepared her heart. And by the way, God had prepared her heart, CJ, before she believed. Hello? Before she believed. Are you with me? That's why she said, as the Lord thy God liveth. See, she hadn't believed in the Lord yet. She said, Elijah is your God. She didn't say he was our God or my God. No, your God, Elijah. Second Chronicles 6, 9. Look what it says. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Now, for what reason and purpose? Here it is. To show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Is your heart perfect towards the Lord today? If it is, God wants to show himself to you strong on your behalf. So let me see. So here we are, the woman that's going to help the woman. God has prepared her heart. Now I want you to see her offering. I want you to see the generous offering of this dear precious woman in verse 15. Look at verse 15 with me. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. What a generous offering. Man of God, I'm going to give you everything I've got. All I've got is a little oil and some bread, a little uh, cruise here, a meal to make some cornflakes. I'll put it down where you all live, okay? You know, I, I like cornflakes. How many of you like cornflakes? Now, I like the frosted ones. Okay, so. Thank you, brother. And then if you want to cut the cholesterol down, get you some Honey Nut Cheerios. Now, if you like to listen to the cereal, you can get Snack Crackle Pop with Rice Krispies. Amen. Yeah, amen. All right. Now, some of you might those, like those yellow big ones, the sugar pops. Uh, there you go. Now you want to make him happy, all you got to do is buy him a box of sugar pops. Amen. All right. So her offering was generous. First of all, she was willing to go. She was willing to give. See, folks, you got to have a willing heart today. You got to have a heart that's willing to go, willing to obey God, and then whatever it is that God's asked you to do, especially if it comes to giving something, you got to have a willing and obedient heart to give it. 
and you're thinking, man, God, this don't make sense. I don't have nothing but a little oil, a little meal to make a cake, and I'm going to die, and you're asking me to give it to Elijah. This does not make sense. And it didn't. But that you see, our ways are not his ways. See, that's what you got to understand this morning. God's ways are different than our ways. So she's got this generous offering. And so what was her offering? Well, first of all, she gave him water. He requested water. Now, you can go three days without water, and then you're going to die. Did you know that? That's a biological, scientific fact. You can go three days without water, and then you're going to die. You can go 40 days without food, and then you're going to die. So it's good to eat once in a while, and it's good to have some water every day. We have a registered nurse here in the ICU. She'll tell you you ought to drink at least 64 ounces of water every day. 64 ounces, I'll be floating. Amen. It's a good cleansing. Cleanses your body, cleanses your process. Amen. All right, I'm going to give you some water. She says, I, I, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you of the last thing that I have, which is water and a little cupcake. And that's it. That's it. But God was preparing her heart before she was even a believer. God prepared her, and so her offering was generous. He gave her water, and then, then, Elijah, uh, then Elijah requested bread, and she gave him bread. I stopped thinking about this situation, man. What would I do? What would you do? Anybody ever been in a situation like this? Or maybe it's even a good thing. See, we, we don't have any problems when we're up on the mountains, do we? But it's when we're down in the valley. Amen? Oh, everything's going fine up here, man. Boy, the stocks are high. The annuities are great. The CDs are great. Oh, I'm telling you, man, oh, it's fantastic. Oh, and then all of a sudden, boom. And you find yourself down in the valley. But it's down in the valley where the green grass grows. Amen. Hello? It's in the valley where God tests us the most. Are you going to trust me in the valley? Oh, I know you had a mountaintop experience, but what about the valley experience? But though, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Hallelujah. It's in the valley. But I want you to see thoroughly about her here. She had her heart was prepared. She had a great offering. But her, her, her hospitality was even gracious. Her hospitality was gracious. First of all, she had grace to serve Elijah. Amen. What did he say? Serve me first. Give to me first. Hospitality was gracious in verse 13. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. First. I'll tell you, one of the most hospitality ladies, godly ladies I have ever met has been right here in this church. And she's sitting with us today who has 32 children. She reminds me of the woman in the boot. You remember the story, right? I've never seen a more hospitable, hospitable woman of hospitality than Miss Eldora Bertram. Amen. And by the way, she's a widow too. She has showed so much hospitality to this church and this preacher through the 23 and a half years I've been here. It's been fantastic. She has this wonderful gift of hospitality. She has the gift to serve, to serve the man of God, to serve the church, to serve the people of God. Oh, I'm telling you, she, and she does it from her heart. Many times she does it first. So we thank God for that. And by the way, so should we. We should be willing to serve God first. Not second or third. Not leftovers. Not when it's, well, I got nothing else to do. Well, I'm bored, nothing else, I might as well do something for God. Serve God first. Listen to what Proverbs 3 9 says Honor the Lord. Do what? Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Everybody get that? 
Hope that didn't go over your head. We're to honor the Lord with our first fruits, with all of our substance, and with our first fruits of all thine increase. God doesn't want your leftovers, your seconds or your thirds. Well, I've seen it happen many times here. Oh, pastor, I just want to let you know, man, I, I got a vacuum cleaner I want to give to the Lord. I know you all could use it here. Amen, we sure could. Thank you. And here they bring it drop it off. And we walk in here and see it. There's no bag in it. The cord's broken off of it. You turn it on and it starts smoking, smelling. Oh, thank you so much for your gift. Though we want to let you know, we just went out and bought us a brand new $500 vacuum cleaner. Man, it's awesome. Did you ever stop to give God the best? Why not give God a $500 off a vacuum cleaner and then let Him provide you with a $1,000 one? How's that? Amen. Amen? Amen? Why does everybody always want to give God second best or third best or stuff that's wore out, beat up, broken down? This is God's house. This is God's work. God's ministry. God wants the best. He deserves the best. He's worthy of the best. But why do we want to give Him second best all the time? God bless you this week. Have you increased this week? Then bring her the first fruits. Boy, getting quiet in here. You know what the Bible says? You want the blessing? Then you've got to be obedient. Now here's the results if you do. Look at verse 10. If you will give of your substance and of your first fruits of all your increase, here's the blessing, but you've got to be obedient first. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. There's the results. Matthew 6, 33. Jesus said, but seek ye... What, what's the first, next word? But seek ye what? First, the kingdom of God and His righteousness... Then what's the blessing? And in all these things shall be added unto you. So she had a, 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 a heart of hospitality. Uh, she was gracious to serve Elijah. And then notice she, was, she had faith to give to Elijah. Verse 15. She had faith to give to him. And she went and did according to all that Elijah said. And she and her house did eat many days. She had faith to give. Do you have faith to give to God today? See, we're talking about mothers here and this beautiful lady here. But a, 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 a biblical principle here applies to all of us. Do you have faith to give to God? See, can you trust God with a blessing? You see, we, we had two wonderful gifts come in this past week to our church. Nobody knew they were coming. Nobody had asked for them. Nobody knew anything about it. But yet God spoke to people in their hearts. And, and, and they felt like they wanted to do something for God. And some of them even mentioned that they wanted to do something big for God. And, and, and they give out of their poverty. They give out of the, of the least that they have. And I'm telling you, those of you that did, get ready. The blessing's coming. God has promised that he will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot control. Even have room to receive it. Malachi 3.10. How many of you believe that? Raise your hand if you're with me this morning. Luke 6.38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give to your bosom. But you've got to trust God to give. How is it we can get a man or a woman saved, their soul from an eternal hell, but we never get their pocketbook saved? See, when God saved you, folks, He saved you all of you. Where are you getting all this out of this passage? We're just getting started. Hang on to your seatbelts. Now we're almost done. Oh, my goodness. She had faith to give to Elijah. Faith to give to God. You say, wait a minute, she's giving it to Elijah. No, she recognized him as the man of God. In the Old Testament, the prophet was the representation of God. God spoke to and through and from the prophet. Hello. Mark 12, 40, 43 and 44. And he called unto him and his disciples and said unto them, this is Jesus talking to them, Verily I say unto you, 
that this poor widow, uh uh-oh, what are we talking about here? A poor widow has cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. It was an open collection. They could all see it. Wonderful. I mean, man, she had faith to give to God. And Jesus used her as an example. All right, let's look at thirdly, the third truth. The first truth was the hurt of the woman. The second truth, the help of the woman. Now let's look at the hope of the woman. How many believe there's hope? How many believe God's always got hope for you? Don't give up. It may get dark. It may look dark. I'm telling you, it may look like it's caving in on you. I mean, I, there's one of, the, one of our ladies here that has gone through so much, and that's Miss Eldora right here. Three or four different times of cancer, a uh, loss of, uh, of her husband, a loss of her grandchild. A loss, I mean, one right after another. And yet here she is sitting in church this morning, praising God, worshiping God. Amen. In spite of her trials and all that she's gone through, and still trusting the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Miss Eldora. I just want to pick on her today, okay? The hope of the woman. Just think about it. She was a woman who thought she was going to die, and now she liveth. Huh? Are you with me, church? First of all, I want you to notice her hope of physical provision. The hope of physical provision. She had no husband, she had no income, she had no source of anything. But in verses 15 and 16, we see that God's going to provide. And she went and did according to all that. And notice what it says in the last part. And he, that is speaking of her son, and her house did eat, how long? Many days. The hope of physical provision. Why? Because she trusted in the word of God. What did she tell Elijah? Nevertheless, at thy God's word. She trusted in God's word. Do you see that? It's fantastic that God would provide. Now, church, listen to me. It may be bleak. It may be down. You may have the last box of uh, sugar pops uh, in in your cabinet. So don't invite him over because he'll eat them all. Okay, amen. Amen. And you may, your bank account might be dry. You may look at your account today, David, and say, "Uh uh-oh, there's no money. Checkbook doesn't balance, it's zero. And you're thinking, wow, how am I going to make it, CJ? I got $10 left. They don't buy much today. That won't even get you a hamburger and a fry and a Coke at McDonald's or Burger King. Okay? And if you buy two of them, you talk about $25. Welcome to the new world. Welcome to the economics. And you can put the guy's name in first there if you want to. I have to be careful so they don't throw me off the air. You know what I'm talking about. You're all pretty smart. Amen? That's all I got is $10, man. That's all I got to my name. Now, Carol and I, we can testify to this. We've done this, and it works. Well, God, I'm going to give it to you first. I'm going to be like a woman's might. I'm going to give you all I got. That's all I got, God. I'm broke. I don't have any money. I don't have any food in our cabinet. We were that way in Alaska. We know. One of our men ran a repo business in our church. You know, we go out and steal cars and boats, planes, everything. In the middle of the night, under the cover of darkness. I said, well, we go in people's yards and steal their cars? He goes, yeah. You've got to be kidding me, man. Do we wear an armored suit? No, oh, they won't even know we're there. We'll have that thing hooked up and gone before they even wake up. I said, this is legal? He goes, oh, yeah, I got papers and everything. We call the police and let them know we're going there first so when they wake up and do find out that their car's been taken or their boat, their plane. So we did that. He said, I got to go get a car. Now, you go with me? I said, sure. I need, I can do. He said, I'll pay you. I didn't know he was going to pay me. He gave us $50 when it was done. I said, well, that's, praise God, man, we need it. We were involved in like a missions conference at our church. That Sunday, I said, Carol, this is all we got. Let's give it to missions, all 50 of it. And we did. We came out and got in our car the next Sunday. Now, how they got in my car, I have no idea. Probably got a hold of Bob because he could get in any car. And our car was full of groceries, full. 
I said, I like this. Let's try this again. We rounded up, went on to get another car, got $50. So I said, right, let's give this to the Lord. That week in the mail, we opened up the mail. We had a check in at David for $500. See, you can't outgive God. Never. You got to trust Him with your heart that God's going to provide. That's why Paul said here in Philippians 4.19, But my God, say it with me, but my God, is He your God today? Are you saved? Are you born again? Do you know Him? Come on, talk to me. But my God, what about my God? He shall, that is a promise from God, He shall supply all of your needs, not your greeds, but your needs according to His riches through Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, what does that phrase mean? That He's going to do it according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That means at the expense of Christ's death on the cross of Calvary, God promises He will provide your need, not your greed. And God did. Put your trust in the Lord. Well, it's not over yet. God provided her physical provision. But now there's going to be the hope, (laughs) oh, watch this, of a literal resurrection. The hope of a literal resurrection. Are you with me? She came in and said, he's dead. There's no life in him. He's not breathing. Oh, you see, first of all, we see there's a tragic loss in verse 17. She said, in the latter part of it, she said, there was no breath left in him. She's now suffering a tragic loss. Now walk it. And she probably got like most of us do. She got angry. Anybody got angry? Does anybody here ever get angry? Thank you, brother, sister, for being honest. And if anybody here ever get angry at the Lord? Come on, raise your hand. Why did I fall down the stairs? Why did I blow out my left knee three weeks ago? I don't have no knee. But I'm walking. Even the surgeon doesn't understand that. But I do. Does it hurt? Yeah, it hurts. All ligaments and tendons and ACLs all torn. Completely gone in my left knee. They're not even going to do surgery on it. Just leave it. But yet I get along pretty good. That's, that's called the Holy Ghost shuffle. Amen. You know what I saw last night on the phone was fantastic. There was a half picture of the half phone, half phone. On the top of the half of the phone was Michael Jackson doing the moonwalk. You know, showing his legs. On the other bottom half was a cat on the table. And the cat was sitting there looking at Michael Jackson doing the moonwalk. And then pretty soon, all of a sudden, the cat started. It was fantastic. I love stuff like that. You see, that would get you motivated, excited, sometimes. She was angry. Look at verse 18. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God. See, she was angry at God, not Elijah. You ever get angry at God? Why things are happening? You want to have a tendency to blame God for what's happening, what you're going through? Be careful with that. Don't do that. Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? You've got to be kidding me. Is this why you have come? To put a greater burden on me? I already told you we were going to eat and die. I don't have anything. She already forgot he'd already been feeding her for a few days. Isn't that how us we are much time? We forget what God's done for us. We forget the blessing. Oh, we pray for God to do something to do it, and he does it, and we forget all about it. Oh, three or four days later, I saw we go, oh, oh, by the way, hey, thank you, Lord, for that. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Amen. So I want you to see there's a tragic loss. There's an angry response to this dear woman that's about to get a literal resurrection. I want you to see a powerful prayer from the man of God. The powerful prayer. Verse 21. And he stretched himself upon the child three times. And he cried unto the Lord and said, here's his prayer, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. 
That's the first recorded resurrection in the Bible. The first one. There was another one. Lazarus, come forth. He'd been dead four days. His soul had left him. Because you see, folks, when we die, the spirit and soul go someplace. If you're saved, it goes to heaven. Amen. See, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. What is your soul and spirit? The body's still laying here. And if you're lost, guess what? Same thing, my friend. Your soul and spirit depart from your body, but it didn't go to heaven. It goes to hell. Oh, man, that preacher just get off of that. I want to hear that. You better hear the truth. You better know what the truth is. Because that's up to you where you're going to spend your destiny, your eternity, and destiny. Oh, man, you, 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 you with this? I'm telling you, this is fantastic. This prayer of the man of God. And soul left and the soul returned. Hey, I know a greater one than that. How many of you believe Jesus was dead? How many of you believe he laid in a tomb for three days? His soul and spirit departed. But it returned again on the third day on Easter Sunday morning. And up from the grave, he arose. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Several. Jesus raised three from the dead. Matthew 21, 22 says, All and all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Philippians 4, 6 and 7, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep or guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. It was a powerful prayer. And then we see, lastly, the triumph resurrection. The triumph resurrection. The first one recorded in Scripture. There was others. Jesus raised three from the dead. He raised himself from the dead. Lazarus from the dead. My goodness. Praise the Lord. Now, what does that all mean to you and I? This morning that are here and those of you that are listening. As we wrap it up, we're done. She experienced a beautiful, wonderful, physical resurrection of her son. Who was dead. And now alive again. Friend, one day death will knock at your door and my door. And we will die. You'll either have a resurrection into life eternal to glory. Or you'll have a resurrection and spend an eternity in a place called hell. Or there will be the translation of the rapture of the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to it. Could happen today. But what about you and those that are listening with us, still with us, hanging in here with us? We're done. Hang on. This is the most important thing. You're going to have a resurrection one day. All of us. When you die. It'll be a resurrection to life eternal and glory. Or it'll be a resurrection to damnation in a place called hell. For all eternity. Or praying for, hopefully, for the rapture of the church, if you're saved. So let's take a look at what 1 Peter 3, 1, 3, and 5 says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which, according to His abundant mercy, hath begotten us. That word begotten there means born again. Are you with me? Again unto a lively hope. How? By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If you're born again, you're going to have a resurrection from the dead. Now watch this wonderful resurrection. It's to an inheritance. Say, I got an inheritance coming. See, if you're saved and born again, you got an inheritance coming. You're just not going to get resurrected. You're going to, have, you're going to get an inheritance. That inheritance is incorruptible. It's undefiled. It fades not away. Now watch this. It's reserved for you in heaven. Amen. You have got an inheritance if you are saved and born again, and begotten us again by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see, you have an inheritance in glory that's reserved for you. Hallelujah. And notice this is kept by the power of God, not by you or me. There's nothing you do to keep it. It's kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, 
ready to be revealed in the last time. God will do the same for you if you're willing today to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. You can have a physical resurrection on the day of glory. You can have be raptured out with the church, whichever comes first, in heaven. And God's got something reserved for you in heaven that's fantastic. It's all yours. But it can only be you. And if you're like this woman and you're willing to put your faith and trust in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation and for glory. You know how I know when she got saved? Verse 24. Now, present tense, by this I know. See, the Bible says we can have a no-so salvation. I don't have to think I'm saved, hope I'm saved, maybe I'm saved, perhaps I'm saved. No, I have a no-so salvation. This is the record that God has given to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. These things, therefore, have I written unto you. What did you write unto me? The record. What's the record that you can have eternal life through Jesus Christ? That's the record. So these things have I written unto you that you may know. You may know that you have eternal life. And that life is in by believing on the name of the Son of God. It's a no-so salvation. She says, and now, present tense, I know. Now when she said, thou art a man of God, she's referenced to God because he was God's representation. And that the word of the Lord, she confessed with her mouth the Lord. Oh, this is fantastic. And in thy mouth is truth. That's why Jesus said in John 17, 17, Father, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. That's why Jesus told doubting Thomas, he said, Thomas, look at me. Thomas, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. That's in John 11. You see, no man cometh unto the Father except by me. Jesus is the truth. Woman got saved. But all this went on before she got saved. It's fantastic. You want to have a resurrection one day? <laughs> You're going to have to believe in Jesus Christ. Simple as that. 1 Kings 17, 24. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Woman got saved. Psalms 119, 7. I will praise thee with uprightness of my heart when I have learned thy righteous judgments. Luke 40, 24, 26, and he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah. That's what we're talking about right here. Are you with me? Jesus is referring to this back in Luke chapter 4. When the heaven was shut up for how long? Three years and six months. That was the drought. Jesus is referring to this woman, and with great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elijah sent. Watch this. None was sent except to this woman. Woo, hallelujah. A city of Sodom unto a woman that was a widow. What a loving, gracious God that we have. God has sent his son into this world to you and I. And through him we might have life and have it everlasting. Do you know him today? Are you saved? Are you born again? Can you put your faith and trust in him as this dear widow woman did on her deathbed, basically? Was willing to turn to God and believe and trust him? Obeyed the man of God? As a result, she got her son back to life. Woo! I'd say that's a pretty good deal, wouldn't you? My goodness. Don't see that too often. But guess what? Mom and Dad, you're here today. Mothers, you're here today. You want to see your son or daughter bought, brought back to life? The Bible says we are dead in our trespasses and sin. We're walking around as dead men and women. But when we come to Christ, the Spirit of God rejuvenates us, translates us, born again when we come to Christ. We're made alive. Those of us are walking in dead and trespasses and sin. But now, we're alive in Christ. If you're here today and you don't know Christ, you've never trusted Him as your Lord and Savior, you've never believed in Him and believed on Him, you have an opportunity to do so today. It's no accident you're here today. 
God put you here by divine appointment and led you here. He led you here to hear the word of God, to hear the word of truth. Then I want you to pray with me today. We're going to do it right now. Right now. Just simply pray with me. Dear God, that's right, go ahead. I confess with my mouth, you are the Lord in heaven. I confess that I'm a sinner and I've sinned against you, God. And I ask you to forgive me and to cleanse me. I'm sorry for my sin. And he will, my friend, he will. I do now believe, there's faith, trust, in my heart that Jesus died on the cross for my sin. He took my place. He paid my sin debt. I believe he was buried, that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, the Bible. So right now by faith, I do call upon you, Lord Jesus, and receive you into my heart and life to be my Lord and Savior and to take me to heaven someday when I die or at that rapture thing the pastor was talking about. Either way. And I pray this prayer in simple faith, believing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.